This week, you're on top of my camera for a full wedding day. See all my settings, the images that I take. We also get a little bit more into off-camera flash, and things get a little bit more dramatic than usual. How's the sunset photo session? Yeah, uh, crazy lightning session. Should we do lightning photos? Ooh. Taylor Jackson shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. Hello and welcome to another wedding day. Uh, I am Taylor Jackson, as always, and I am your host for today's wedding day. Um, I am using my 85. Uh, I have, I don't know, permanently retired? Probably not, but I've temporarily retired my Nikon Z6 uh, back to, I guess, like second backup role that I'm kind of rolling back with my 850 and my 750 as my main cameras. Uh, I love the fact, like, I love the Z6. It's a really, really great camera, but it just, I guess like isn't a proper backup because the lenses aren't instantly exchangeable in between cameras um, as well as a one card slot. I just, I have a lot of redundancies in my backup system and that one really just keeps stressing me out. So just having two cards in both of my cameras um, I feel like makes makes me a happier photographer at the end of the day. Also today uh, is the equivalent of, uh, I'm gonna look it up here because I don't know the, the Fahrenheit conversion, but it is 44 or feels like 44 uh, Celsius. Um, to Fahrenheit so today it's like 111 degrees Fahrenheit out here in Canada uh, it's pretty hot the last time actually no I guess there was two times so I, I did a shoot in proper 48 degrees Celsius heat in Kuwait a long time ago um, which was one challenging because of that two because of the social ability that you're not even really supposed to hold hands with your partner and you notice that all of my posing usually t people touch and people kiss uh, you can't really do that in Kuwait and then as a segue to Marshall arriving the last time we shot in this heat in pretty much this exact day uh, was in Mexico. So if you haven't seen the, the, the survivor photographer, three photographers, like 30 person wedding, uh, behind the scenes wedding day, it's one of my favorites. Uh, Marshall's also in it and it was this hot and it was also on the verge of thunderstorms kind of all day. So uh, a lot of parallels today, but today I'm the main photographer instead of Tim and um, I'm actually hired, which is nice because I kind of just showed up to that wedding and I felt weird not having a camera in my hand. So this concludes my opening monologue. That was my attempt to do the, the string Conan cutting. It wasn't very good. Let's go take some photos. Marshall. Let's get right to it. We did a really fast getting ready section, uh, maybe like two, three minutes max, uh, a few photos, and then we're heading to the getting ready. And then we did kind of the guys prep while we went to pick Steve up to bring him to the first look location. Take like one step kind of towards me. That's good. There. I disagree right now. Right Everything looks good. I'm going to do one shot kind of at your watch here too. We're probably dead. One thing I pride myself in is how efficient I can get all the shots that I need. So uh, I am kind of always ready to go and I always know exactly what I want to do. And here we are heading into the first look. Marshall is set up over there with Steve and I was just kind of following Amy. And now we're just going to kind of do everything we can possibly within kind of the scope of this. So uh, always put your first look in the, in the shade or at least a good light. Um, the worst is always when there is kind of directional light coming from one direction so you can't really get a great shot of both people. Um, today they're a little bit more inside the bushes than usual uh, which is a, a small problem but not really that big of a deal. I'd rather have the good light there than bad light um, and like cleaner backgrounds I guess. But one of the things as a wedding photographer, you gotta have those lenses that can really make that shallow depth of field so you can get rid of uh, background distractions so you don't have things that are sharp and in focus coming out of people's heads uh, so that you can kind of shoot in really any circumstances and work with any conditions that you're given on the wedding day because you don't always have control over everything and you gotta do the best you can. So still kind of first looking, uh, what I do is I just kind of hang out near them and as soon as they're like, all right, what do we do now? Uh, I just ask them for just a straight photo of, of like just smile, face the camera. And usually that's one of the ones that the family would typically print. Um, also, I don't know if there's a rule, yes or no, for putting rings on if you're doing a first look. You guys, yeah, just arm around each other and you can just look towards me over here. <laughs> that's great. And if you want to get a little closer together like that, that's great. 
This is really perfect. You can even put your desk down entirely if you want. It's good like that. The lighting in this little area is perfect. Good find. Good find, Marshall. Awesome. And if you want to look towards each other and you can just put both arms around each other and get really nice and close for... So I will say that the Taylor Jackson 2019 color preset is very much geared to situations like this that are not ideal, but it makes reality look a heck of a lot better. That's great. And if you guys want to look at each other and just be happy with each other, amazing. One of the big updates of the 2019 over the 2018 preset is pretty much just how it operates in non-ideal conditions, and I'm super happy with it. All right. Just like that looks fantastic. And you guys can just look at me and be happy uh, for a few here. Tomorrow we're actually going to be editing through all these images so you can actually see like Perfect. Really. And if you guys want to face into each other and get really nice and close for a couple. That's good. The hands just take like a little walk kind of almost centered towards the house there. Go away blue friend. That looks great. And if you guys want to turn around and come back the exact same and you can just look at each other and just pretend you're just going for a walk. That's so good. And if you want to look towards us for the last one here, that's great. Also for comparison, I shot this with the 7200 obviously, and then this was with the 24. So kind of the same scene, but looks entirely different on the 24. You really feel like you're there and you're part of the scene. So if you have that outgoing personality and you can be a few feet away from a couple all the time, I think that it is definitely a valuable skill to have. That looks awesome. And if you want to look at each other for the last one here. As a wedding photographer, I am permanently on candid duty, and when the first members of the family start showing up, I'm usually making mental notes and getting as many photos of them as I can because I know they're probably the more important people of the day. And I might make everyone take like just one step kind of this way just so you're a little more centered. Sorry to... <laughs> That's good right there. Sorry that that was like five steps, but thank you for reading my mind. Today we're getting the family photos done before the ceremony, and I love that logistically. Right. These look fantastic. I like this location a lot better. And I'm getting somewhat eye contact. I think he's looking at Marshall, but that's okay. Then we switched it up to do some family photos in a little more green space since we got a cloud. It's all right. All right, these look great. All right, and everyone just have a look towards me here. All right, those worked out so well. I'm super happy. Um, any other combinations you'd want here while we have uh, shade for a moment? I always have a core list, but I also like to open it up in case anybody wants to do shots with their family or whatever when we have the time to do it. Perfect. And if you guys want to look at each other and get really close for the last ones. All right, that's great. Quick interruption today. It is September, which means it is Patreon month. And what Patreon month is, is that I'm doing a few videos up here on YouTube, but all of my content is pretty much primarily focused on Patreon. I'm doing 14 videos, so we're gonna be starting, actually we've already started on the first with a full pricing breakdown. So I've redesigned my pricing and you can see all the numbers and you can see my, my walkthrough of my pricing package, as well as lots more to come, specifically the Facebook and Instagram ad section of it is going to be incredibly valuable. So uh, sign up for Patreon, even just for this month to get all that content. And when you sign up for Patreon, you also get all the back content, which includes all of my presets. Uh, every single one of the presets you're gonna see in this video as well as everything else. Um, some of them aren't even available to be purchased if they're only available on Patreon. So sign up there, get everything. If you enjoy it, stick around. I hope that you stick around. There's lots more to come over the winter and I really do wanna see you guys uh, be crazy successful in 2020. So uh, the next couple months, all gonna be about getting you set up for that January launch to really dominate 2020. So uh, yeah, back to the video. It's a lot of plans. All right, ceremony is supposed to be outside, but because one, it's like 45 degrees Celsius, and two, it's potentially was going to thunderstorm, we made the call early in the day uh, to do it inside, which is great. Um, controlled conditions, good light in general, but very tight conditions overall with uh, a bigger group. And also you can see just a big cast of kind of green over the entire scene, which is a bit of a challenge just because there's so much green space that's basically bouncing all the light into this room, um, making it a little bit more challenging 
maybe than uh, a usual kind of white space would be. Got eyeline. Wow. Not a usual thing that happens. And it was for just a brief moment. It wasn't even really that he looked at me. It was just a very quick thing and I happened to catch it. So um, I don't know if that's good or bad. I feel like in, in modeling and fashion, that's good. But I feel like in weddings, uh, you want things to be a little bit more candid. But when somebody makes eye contact with the camera like that, it really does stand out in the image gallery, which uh, I guess maybe you can use your judgment whether you're into that or not. Super strong light fall off. I wish I would have noticed that uh, earlier and I would have brought my flash and put my on-camera flash on for when everybody stands up and really kills all the light in the center of the aisle. But it really is hard to predict like absolutely everything that could ever happen at a wedding. I've probably been to, I don't even know, maybe 800 weddings and I still have yet to, I would say, photograph the perfect wedding. I feel like when you do that there's still room for improvement even if you photograph something that feels like it's like the best and you can never do anything better there's a pretty good chance that like two months are going to go by and you're going to be doing better work than you were at that point i'll also talk about it that wasn't a sentence i'll also talk about it a little bit more tomorrow uh, in the editing section of this that i'm trying to hide the elements that i don't want especially in this room there's the little air conditioner by the door there's some kind of floor panels for electrical that i don't really want in the photos because i know i'm gonna have to photoshop them out but there are ways that if you time things correctly that you could just hide them naturally in the scene uh, rather than spending the time in post-production. Really divided light here. It's really orange and warm inside and to set up an off-camera flash or studio strobe or something just would really do a lot of, I think, negative things for the scene. Plus like Marshall and I are already here. There's already kind of a big production looking presence. I don't really want to bring in any additional lighting for it. Uh, I can get by without it and I can do 95% of good images as I could have done um, had I brought in more equipment and more gear and made more of a show. I think uh, that I, I personally agree with that and I think my couple agrees with that as well um, that whenever people are in the first meeting I usually just kind of have a, a gauge of interest on that I'm like how much of a production or I'll put out a comment that like I really don't like it when there's like five photographers slash videographers at a wedding that it feels too much and if they agree with that chances are we're probably going to be working together if they don't agree with that and they want more of a production they want like five camera dudes the same day edit and all that um, then maybe there's not a couple for me and that's totally cool as well um, I do my best to put out there onto the internet kind of who I am what I do so that people that maybe disconnect with that they don't even contact me and the people that do connect with that really feel a strong connection towards me and understand that hey like Taylor is actually the photographer for you um, but something to think about I think the more personality of yourself that you can put out there on the internet um, maybe a more professional version of personalities um, that that is like the best way to one, attract your ideal client and two, just like have a great time at work every every time that you go to a wedding that you're photographing essentially like weddings for your friends that you just haven't met yet. The other, uh, I guess, thing about going to a lot of weddings is you understand more of the flow of the officiant. And even if you haven't met the officiant before, you probably know where the funny parts are going to be and where the serious parts are going to be. So you can get in position prior to all those jokes going off so that you're able to actually capture um, some good candid reactions rather than just serious faces uh, looking at a ceremony. Moving into the rings, I've spoke to this before and it seemed to resonate with a few people that there is no such thing as a perfect ring shot that it's... I would say the most challenging shot to get. So um, don't worry too much about it if you don't nail it every single time. Just make sure you nail the other core elements and your couple will be really happy. Uh, I put my Godox V1 flash on top of my camera here after watching what happened when everybody stood up uh, on the way down the aisle. And it worked out pretty good. I'll speak to this a little bit more tomorrow. I wish I would have been on my 35. I always err on the side of being too wide to make sure I get everything, but I really do prefer the look of a 35. So if you're on the fence between a 24 and a 35 and you want to invest in one good piece, uh, I would say 35. And can I make you just kind of rotate this way exactly what you're doing though? That's great. Some sort of natural frame in there. That's good there. I'm just waiting for you to get back in this shade here. And you guys look at each other like you're just going for a walk in the... Amazing. All right, so extended family, we're just gonna do one big group shot so everybody just hop in. Everybody's in. To be in the sun, so if you feel like the sun is on your face, uh, go this way. All right, that's starting to look all right. I might even get um, everybody that's in the sun, just come in nice and close. As long as I can see your face, my camera will be up here. So as long as you can see my lens, 
And then everyone just get as close as you can together. You can come together in the back there if you want. All right, everyone's good. All right, just uh, keep looking this way for a couple seconds. I'm gonna do a few. Shooting on live view, that's why my camera sounds a little bit weird. It's all good. All right, suffering from the same kind of green creeping into this room, so I'm gonna use my off-camera flash to make it a little bit more daylight colored. And I'm getting it kind of close to the elements that I want to photograph, so in this case, I want to photograph uh, not Marshall, but the flowers behind him. It's kind of, the light wasn't really on you, or intended for you. Easily could have gotten away with not using off-camera flash, but by using an off-camera flash here, even just one single flash at a lower power, it really does help make things a lot more uh, three-dimensional and just a lot better of an image overall. So if you have the couple seconds uh, with the Godox, this system, the V1 and the, the X-Pro controller, everything just works all the time, so there's no troubleshooting. So the setup process is like just a couple of seconds rather than with pocket wizards and stands, it used to take me a long time. Uh, now I'm a lot more apt to just like put that out of my bag, put it on the desk here or the table here and uh, get that shot off. Uh, I'm also zooming this in so that I am uh, I know that at some point now, uh, I'm gonna be shooting this kind of at the ceiling around people and I would rather not have the kind of full bleed into people's eyes that I would rather just kind of shoot it just off the spot that I wanted to hit. During this time that I've been doing this, Marshall has been at cocktail hour getting photos of everybody. Uh, I'm gonna get one last photo here of the cake table and then uh, off in the distance you can see the kids playing on the stairs there and I think that's gonna make a great photo. And then I hit my GoPro and I think that I'm turning it on but I'm actually turning it off, so uh, here's the photo. It's nice, there's no distracting elements, there's no exit signs, there's no fire alarms. It's actually crazy that I was able to kind of isolate against those and that all just came together candid and naturally. Setting up my off-camera flash here, I'm trying to integrate it into the floral, I guess. Uh, I just wanted it kind of close to the head table so that I could get everybody at the head table in perfect lighting as well as anyone at the podium and as well as family that's like super close there. And again, I've zoomed my flash in so that it's not going to be like too distracting, that it really is just shooting kind of straight at the ceiling there. Uh, if you would even like want to put a snoot around it to make sure that there isn't anything just like super distracting, uh, that's also a possibility as well, but you'll just really limit the beam. Uh, when it hits the ceiling. Quality of light here is actually really good um, with this single off camera flash. I'm super happy with it. It's a pretty strange dinner setup they've given us tonight. One chair here, one chair here, a table. But quality sound. What's in your uh, goodie bag here, Marshall? Oh, we got the pretzels. Ooh. Not gluten free. We got veggie kit. It's kind of like a build your own dip kit. I do appreciate that. Apple for dessert. Bottle of water. <laughs> What's this? 70% jar of chocolate. Terroir noir. Oh, guac. <laughs> what? The dip. Get some guac. What we got in here? Chicken sandwich? Tuna sandwich. It's the chicken. That. Today we were going to do some sunset photos, but we didn't really get a sunset, so I set up my flash as a backlight, and uh, that yeah. looks great. And I might have you guys, um, do you want to just hold hands and you can just kind of walk towards me here? That's great, and you can kind of look at each other like you've been doing, or even put an arm around each other now that you're bustled, you can get a little closer. Okay, that's kind of the path then. <laughs> this is me dropping my flash stick off on lowest power. Mm -hmm. I've so I'm gonna have you guys, if you wanna start kind of like right about here, I'm just gonna have you kind of walking this way here. On the grass in? Yeah, so just kind of follow this little like kind of line here. Okay. Um, don't go that way, that way's trap. <laughs> All right, that looks good. And same deal, you can kind of look at each other and... Perfect. That looks incredible. 
All right, just that tiny little bit of light really does make the image a lot better and more three-dimensional rather than just kind of being them in the background. There's kind of a third element that's coming into it, uh, and I like it a lot. So I've set my flash back up kind of at the front of the table there, and I'm going to weave my way in between everybody, um, which is always fun and awkward. And right now, uh, I'm kind of using the flash almost to make the head table and to make the podium great quality light and then everything else is a little bit darker um, so that I'm able to kind of frame throughout that but just this quality of light from like this angle right here this is also my favorite angle because they're always looking at the couple so uh, it makes it a lot easier to photograph and get real reactions so I'm gonna have this at like minimum power yeah and if you just want to kind of backlight them from like kind of over the shoulder like this yeah, yeah. so I'm super wide but I'm gonna be like this and then if you're just kind of like off there more than 45 yeah yeah, so just like putting like right the back of their heads. Yeah. All right, this is not a session that I usually get to do. This weird dark, it's a lot darker in real life than it looks like right now. The clouds are starting to roll in and it really is gonna be uh, quite a storm in a moment. All right, so I'm gonna have you guys out on the grass here. Let's test it out for you first. Might even say if you're just even like kind of right here. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good already. <laughs> hmm? Is it? Yeah. Not one twenty eighth? How about now? Cool. All right. And if you guys just want to get really close to each other and just, uh, these will be like the, and you can kind of look at each other. And even if you want to kind of get really, really close together, Marsha, you can come up kind of just over here. And even if you want to rotate a little more, sorry. I'm <laughs> that looks so good. And if you want to move this hand, just kind of like up on our shoulder. Me? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Other hand. So we'll, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, if you I want to. Silly, sorry right. that I'm like <laughs> remarkably closer to you guys than I usually am. That's okay. <laughs> my, my ring. Hand ah, perfect. Time? I like it. Uh, Marshall, if you want to... Right about there, it's probably good. So good. Perfect. Amazing. All right. That was great. I love that natural light fall off down to the bottom left corner, uh, a reason that I love Nikon lenses. Crazy. Lady. How's the sunset photo session? Yeah, crazy lightning session. Should we do lightning photos? Yeah, Ooh. This is a live meme of me every single time I've ever tried to take lightning photos. There it goes. <laughs> I told you it's a pre-flash before it goes. As soon as I point the camera yeah. at you. Where's that one? That was on the other side of this tree. Man, I can't be out here too long. Alright, that is all. Uh, still same setup, just flash center of the room, kind of camping this spot over here because I know that she's going to be looking at the people on the head table and getting all the photos I need, making it easy on myself. And even though I'm kind of up the front, I don't really feel like I'm too much in the way that I'm too distracting uh, to guests. So um, yeah, that's my life. Thanks for joining me. Tomorrow we're going to be editing all these images that you've seen, plus a few more that I didn't actually end up including in the video. So if you're interested in that, it'll be up tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, join up over at Patreon. There's lots of business and marketing tips coming up for wedding photographers to get you uh, your 2020 kickstarted and really get you dominating your market. So uh, see you over there. 14 videos in 30 days. Patreon.com slash Taylor Jackson. There's a link in the description.